Well, Mr. Chairman, first, uh, I want to thank you for your leadership on the legislation that you've introduced. Uh, we do need a level playing field. We do need predictability. We do need a rational basis for how we provide in the tax code for our energy sources. And I think you've given us a template. And I just really want to first thank you for your, your leadership on this issue. Uh, I, I do want to acknowledge uh, several of the witnesses. Uh, their comments have been what I agree with. Uh, as Pope said, we need a level playing field, and I couldn't agree more that we do need a level playing field on energy. And Mr. Rill, I, I appreciate your comments in regards to a, a carbon tax. I do think that's the clearest, easiest way that we can reward uh, clean uh, energy. So I think that is, a, and we energize the, the private sector to do what's right. So I think that's e extremely important. And then Senator Crapo asked a question to Mr. Sunday in regards to nuclear power, which I agree with. I'm a Democrat. He's a Republican. We need nuclear power. It's 20% of our electricity today. It is a carbon-free, basically, source of, of, of energy. So until we can get to that level playing field, nuclear power is at a disadvantage in that uh, it does not have a production tax credit or investment tax credit. Uh, it, the cost of uh, power today is, it makes it very difficult to modernize our nuclear power plants without some form of a tax credit. So we are looking at a, pro a production tax credit in this Congress uh, as, a, as a way of leveling a playing field on nuclear power. So I wanted to give Ms. Pope and Ms. perhaps Mr. Bill an opportunity to respond as to on at least uh, the current basis what we need to do to encourage the modernization of our nuclear power plants. Um, thank you, Senator. Um, additional tax policy that enables the continuation of the country's nuclear plants is critically important uh, if we're going to achieve the 2030 and 2035 goals. Existing nuclear is an important carbon-free resource and today, as you noted, makes up 20% of the country's energy supply and clearly that much higher percentage of the clean energy supply for the country. But new nuclear is going to take investments. It's going to take investments that have certainty uh, because we know the complexity. Uh, it's going to take uh, investments when partnering with Idaho National Labs and other labs as part of DOE. It's going to take uh, credits and the discussion we've had today with regards to tech neutral um, and um, incentives that allow for all participants to be able to participate equally. So that is allowing people to be able to use investment tax credits, production tax credits, and most importantly, um, the uh, take making sure that everyone is able to access um, the end that we have a normalization fix uh, for all participants, particularly utilities, most of whom operate many of the, util uh, the nuclear plants in the country. Thank you, Mr. Brill, you want to add? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Senator Cardin. Um, I would note, I would agree uh, with you and others who have talked about the importance of nuclear power um, as a consistent, reliable source of energy in the United States. Um, consistent with my testimony and a price on carbon, a price on carbon uh, would it likely extend the life of the existing uh, fleet or stock of nuclear power in the United States. To get to new investments in nuclear power, that will involve uh, new technologies, new research, um, uh, and, and new uh, and, and regulatory changes that will facilitate and bring down the cost of those new investments as well. Thank you. I want to mention one other area, and that's conservation. Conservation, conserving energy would, is a win-win-win for everyone. And our tax code needs to be sensitive on how it, we can use that to encourage conservation. Uh, it, we were able to get Section 179D, which allows for the uh, energy efficiencies of our buildings uh, to be made permanent, but there are still areas that we could vastly improve the tax code as it relates to the conservation of energy in our buildings under Section 179D. Uh, there are other sections of the tax code that can encourage conservation and reduce the amount of energy we use, which would be friendly towards our uh, climate uh, greenhouse gas emissions. So. I just really want to put on the table that one of the areas that I think is low hanging fruit is for us to in, improve the provisions we have in our tax code as it relates to conserving the use of energy. We can do that in the auto industry, you know that with electric vehicles, or, uh, we, we can do that in so many different areas. And I, I applaud the chairman for his leadership in this area and for the other members of our committee as we work together to develop an energy policy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman.
Thank you, Senator Cardin. You're the first to explicitly mention conservation, and we appreciate it. Our next two senators will be Senator Cassidy and Senator Brown and colleagues. We're going to try to keep this moving, even though we have uh, a vote. Senator Cassidy. Hey, Mr. Sunday. Thank you for being here.